let's talk about the get around shot. I've had quite a few of you ask me about how to throw the get around shot. So I want to do a video on how to throw it, but I also want to talk about what it is, why to throw it, what's the benefits of throwing the get around shot. And I may not cover it quite in that order, but we'll, we'll, we'll touch on all those topics here in this video and try to keep it as condensed, as concise as I can get it for you. Let's jump in real quick here and talk about what the get around shot is. And it's really simple. It's what it says, right? If, you're, if your partner throws a blocker, you're going to get around their bag and leave that blocker there. Now, why are we doing that? For me, when I play cornhole, I always want to have the advantage in the round. Every bag I throw, I want to have the advantage. The sooner I can get that advantage, the better the chances are of me scoring that round and the more points I'm going to score in that round. And when I say advantage, what do I mean? I mean, I've either got more bags in the hole that my opponent has, or I have more bags in front of the hole between their bag and the hole, which means I have more bags in scoring position. Let me give you an example here, maybe a visual of what I'm talking about. If my opponent comes in and they throw their first bag blocker, if I come and throw a back blocker behind them, they have the advantage because in order to collect my bag, I really have to go through their bag or I have to wait until they collect their bag before I can get mine. And in this situation, that's a tough push. I got to push two bags up that far. It's going to be tough for me to collect both those bags to get my bag. Now, it is possible for me to collect my bag and leave their bag there. That's a difficult shot. That's not a shot I have in my arsenal. That's not a shot that 99.9999% of you out there have. That's a really tough shot. And even the ones who can do it, it's not a shot you can do very consistently yet. So not something I would recommend. But if my opponent throws that blocker there and I can find a way to get my bag around them and into the hole, whether it's an airmail, whether it's a cut, whether it's a roll, a flop, or a get around, if I can put my bag in the hole and leave their blocker there, now I have advantage, which means if I continue to put bags in the hole, at some point around, they have to collect that bag, otherwise they're going to give up points. So as long as I can stay ahead, I have the advantage. Or if I can take my bag and get around and come in that position there after that blocker, now they're in the situation that I was with the back blocker, is in order for them to collect that bag, they've got to go through my bag which means I, my bag has to go in first. And if I have last bag in the round, I love to take hole control here because I know if my last bag, I can come to the short air mail and collect that and leave that bag there, which means it puts the pressure on them on their second or third bag or even their last bag to try to figure out how to push through and collect. And maybe they push through and miss and leave both their bags short and I can take my bag in and get four points of two. Now, how can you do that? You can do that with cuts. You can do that rolls, you can do that flops, even get around. You can take the whole control. When am I choosing to get around over one of those other shots? Especially for me, because I, I, I like to throw cuts. I don't have a roll or flop. I have a cut. So why would I choose to get around over the cut? Well, let's talk about what the get around is and how it, how it works. And the get around has a lot to do with the rotation of the back. For me, I'm a right-handed thrower. My back has a clockwise rotation. Most right-hand throwers have a clockwise rotating back. Most left-hand throwers have a counterclockwise rotating back. There are a few exceptions where people have reverse rotating bags, but it's all about the rotation. If your bag is rotating clockwise, you want to go around the left side of the bag. And the reason I say this is because if the bag is spinning this direction, it wants to naturally walk around their bag, put it in the hole. And that's why as a right-hand throw over the clockwise rotating bag, I'm always going to go around the left. Now, I've got some clips here of me throwing some get-around shots, as well as I've got some slow-motion overhead shots to let you see that rotation. I really want you to look at those, those clips. Watch this throw. Watch the bag as it rotates and spins around, how it walks around and pulls itself around their bag. And that's why for me, if I have an opening, a bigger opening of the hole on the left side of their bag, I'm more likely to throw a get-around because that left side favors my my ro clockwise rotating bag and makes it easier for me to get around. It also allows me to bump their bag more to the right. So if I'm throwing outside arm here and I'm throwing that direction and they throw a blocker more in my lane and they give me the middle on the left side, I want to throw that get around because I can spin around their bag, but I can also push their bag more to the right, which brings it completely out of play. Now, if I'm on the other side, I'm throwing inside arm and they throw a blocker more into the middle of the board and they leave me a lane on the left side, I still want to throw my get around because I can push their bag back into their lane, open my lane up for a clearer shot on my next throw and make them deal with their blocker and get it out of my way. This is where bag choice also comes to play and why I may choose a get around over a cut shot or a roll or flop. Tell me for cuts, rolls or flops, I want a fuller bag, a bouncier bag, a bag's got a little bit stickier, slow side to really be able to grab the board and make that cut or hit and pop up for the roll or flop. But maybe I go to a blind draw or I'm in a switch holio and I get a, a partner who likes to throw fast bags, who likes those loose, floppy, fast bags, and I just can't throw my cuts as well. That's where a get around is perfect because honestly, for a get around, I want a fast bag. I want a floppy bag. And that's because on a get around, I've got a small sliver of the hole, but I'm aiming for a small side corner of the hole. And with faster materials, if I come through and grab with just a small bit, that bag is more likely to drip in because these faster materials are going to, are more hole friendly. They're less likely to hang up. And a floppier bag is really to grab and hook that, that edge of the hole and pull the bag back in. So I don't have to get as much bag over the hole. 
a fuller, bouncier bag is more is less likely to grab. It's more likely to, to skip over. The other area where I think get around shots are great is a, is battling against the V block. Right? You, you you hear people talk all the time about the, the V block. What is the V block? It's when your opponent throws that bag up the middle and you get that V shape on the bottom, or they call it sometimes they'll call it a diamond block. Right? And the, and the idea is with that bag sitting there, if you try to push through and you miss a little bit on one side or the other, you're going to hit the edge of the, the side of their bag and it's going to flex your bag off. And it, it, it in theory becomes a tougher bag to collect. But honestly, when my opponent throws a V block, I smile because I love playing against V blocks. Why is that? It's, it's because I throw a get around and a cut shot. So depending on what side of the board I'm playing against, if I'm playing outside arm and I'm coming at this way, I'm going to throw a cut shot. I'm going to step out. And that's the one thing people don't always use, realize is you have three feet on your side. Use that three feet anywhere in there. You can stay you, you can stay anywhere in that three feet. So if my opponent throws a V block right here in, in, in my lane, I'm going to step out probably the full amount and I'm going to throw a cut shot. If I'm out there, I'm going to throw a cut shot and I'm aiming for the flat spot of their back. And what I want to do is I want to hit, I want to cut into their bag and take whole control and put my bag in and I want to move their bag back into their lane. If I'm on inside arm, if I'm on the inside arm and I'm throwing at this angle, this is where I throw a, a, a get around. And I love the V blocks for get arounds because that corner sticking out here becomes like a, a, like a cog of a gear where your bag can grab it and it pulls your bag up. So when I come in, I'm st- again, I'm stepping out. I'm aiming for that corner there. And I'm throwing this bag, and I'm going to land in. And with the rotation of my bag, my bag's going to hit. It's going to walk and pull itself right around that corner and, and, and take whole control or go in. When your opponent throws that V-block, don't focus on the point. Step out and take advantage of the flat sides. And that's where the cuts and the get-arounds really give you an advantage. Now, if you've got a roll, you can pop over it, no problem whatsoever. But I really do love the get-around or the cut because, because when I'm coming around their bag, I'm bumping into their bag. So as I'm coming around here, I'm hitting their bag. I'm moving their bag out of the way, which, which means my next shot, I don't have to deal with their bag. Right? That bag is out of play. They've now got to bring it back into play with their shot, which is a good chance they're going to miss or their bag is going to kick off. It just makes a tougher shot for them while it leaves me with a potential easy shot to score points in that round. The whole idea of throwing the get-around is pretty simple, and I probably I probably should touch this earlier. I talked about much, but when I'm throwing a get-around, I want to aim for the for the side of their bag that I'm trying to get around. So if I'm trying to come around the left side, which is 95% of the time I'm going to get I'm going to the left side. I'm aiming for the left side of their bag, the left edge of their bag, because I want to I want to bump into their bag and use their bag to allow me to climb around there. So I'm utilizing their bag to pick my bag up and spin around it. And, and as I mentioned, by using that, I'm also bowling their bag further away. So that also means that if I'm throwing outside arm on that side, coming this way, and they throw a block on my side, now I'm not stepping out. I'm standing tight. But I'm coming down here in the middle, and I'm trying to aim right into this side of their bag. So I'm going to come in with a spin, hit into their bag, and I can walk around and use that rotation to let your bag climb around. And that's the key. The key is the rotation. And even if you have to go around the, the right side for me, if I'm you know throwing clockwise bag rotation, go to the right side, if I have enough rotation, I can come here, enough rotation, I can spin their bag out of the way and play that get around game. It's a tougher game to get around because you're now you're spinning to push your bag away. You're not spinning to grab and pull your bag over. So it becomes a little tougher, but it's possible. But the more rotation you can put on your bag, the easier it is to get around their bag. So if you struggle with rotation, you don't have a lot of rotation, go work on that first. I actually have a video I put up in the series previously. You can go watch about how to really get generate more rotation. And then once you get that rotation in, then it's really simple. Spin that bag and aim for the corner, the, the edge, the side of the bag that you're going to go around and let your bag just walk around it. it. The bag will do the work for it. It's not a complicated shot. It's not a shot where you've got to get a certain orientation or a tilt or an angle. It's your same flat bag. You just want good rotation and you've got to be accurate. I hope this video has answered your questions. I try to condense it down as short as I can. I don't want to drag this out to be a 20 or 30 minute long video. If I didn't touch on everything or you still have some more questions, drop a comment down below. Shoot me a message on it. I'll try to help you answer that or try to point you the right direction. For some of you, you may not struggle with the get around shot. Or maybe you've watched this video, you've practiced and you've mastered this. And now you want to take the next step. Take a look at your throw, take a look at your game, and what's the one thing that's holding you back? What's the one thing that's keeping you from becoming the best Cornwall player you can be? Drop a comment down below, let me know, and maybe that'll become a future video in this series. As always, I thank you guys so much for your support, and I thank you for watching.